All right, all right, all right. Looks like this thing is recording here, okay? Looks like it's we're good. We're getting ready to go. Just want to make sure I got my mic up in here. I'm using my mic. Yeah, buddy, look at the mic. Yeah, buddy. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, we're using a mic here. I got to make sure it's uh working here. But let's go ahead and get this started, okay? Maybe you could already see some of the problems on the screen look a little bit more intense than some of the other problems we've been looking at. Because at the end of the day, they are just going to get harder and harder, all right? So today we're going to be looking at, let's do some basics. We're going to start with the basics. But today we're going to be looking at some um, problems that have variables on both sides of the equations. Okay, that's what we're going to start with. Problems with where multi-step equations that have variables on both sides. Okay, variables on both sides. All right. I hope you understand what I'm saying about variables on both sides. All right. We're taking a look at number three right here. So let's take a look at this problem here and let's see if we can do it. Okay. We need to solve for the variable. In this case, we're solving for M. We are going to use the order of operations. We're going to do everything in reverse. Okay. We can do the same things. But here's the deal. In this problem here, though, we do not technically know what side to undo. Because in these problems we see right here, there's a variable on the left and the right side. So we can't, you know, we don't know which way, where to start, okay? So these problems, let me just write this down here, have a have variable on both sides of equation, okay? That's what it is. That's what it is here, okay? So in these problems, we have a variable on both sides of the equation here, okay? That's what it is. Now, I'm going to ask you, the easiest way to attack these, undo the side with less value okay now let's i'm just gonna put less value in parentheses not in parentheses sorry quotation marks because during today you we'll, we'll see what that means okay what do you mean by least value or the less value with you know i probably should put least right actually that's probably better with the least value okay least is probably a better word but notice you have two M's on the left side of the equation. I hope you see it. They're highlighted. It's these right here, okay? I got these right here. And I have three M's on the right side of the equation. Okay, we're not even looking at the numbers here, and I'm even going to highlight the numbers. On the left side, we have a positive 12. On the right side, we have a negative 31. Right now, we're just focusing on the letter M's, okay? We are going to undo the side. Notice we're going to undo the side, undo the side with less value. Okay, this is what I mean. On the left side, we have two M's. On the right side, we have three M's. So which is the one that has less value? In this case, it would be the two M's. This is the one we're going to undo because it's the smaller value. The coefficient here is 2. So it's smaller. It is uh, less value than the coefficient on the other side of 3. That's what we're going to undo. So how do we undo it? Well, again, order of operations. We got to do everything opposite, opposite, okay? So the opposite of positive 2m is negative 2m. Whatever you do on one side, we do to the other. That stuff never goes away, all right? Notice the same steps happen. What happens to the two M's on the left side? They get canceled out. They're gone. They get canceled, okay? Because two M's minus two M's leaves us zero M's. It leaves us nothing. So we're going to cancel that out. The 12, we bring straight down. That 12 comes straight down. Let's look at the right side. Three M's minus two M's leaves us with 1m, okay? You do not need to write the number 1. Many times, honestly, many times they'll just put let the letter m, okay? It's okay, but I'm going to go ahead and put the 1. And then we bring down the rest of this, minus 31, okay? Now we have eliminated the variable from the one side of the equation. 
on the left side, the variable is gone. And now we could work this out. Now we could start undoing the rest of this by using gemdas. Okay, now we could start using gemdas. Mr. Ligado, though, what if you have a question? Mr. Ligado, Mr. Ligado, the work is not on the right, I mean, on the left side anymore. 1m minus 31 is on the right side. It's not on the left side. It's not in the beginning of the problem. It's okay. It's still the same steps, okay? So now we're working on the right side of the equation, okay? We're working on the right side. Do we have any adds or subtracts on the right side? We sure do. We see a minus 31. So the opposite of minus 31 is plus 31. We're going to add 31 to both sides. Guess what happens to the 31s on the right side? We cancel them out. And notice we're working on the right side because the right side is the side with the variable, okay? So notice what happens. I'm left with 1m on the right. Let's go ahead and do this work here. We got 12 plus 31. Well, 2 plus 1 makes 3. And 1 plus 3 makes 4. 43 equals to 1m, okay? But really, we don't need to put that 1. Technically, we're already done. 43 equals 2m. And I'm just going to write the m like this because we already have 1m. 1m is what's remaining, the 1m. Remember, the 1's still here. It's invisible, but it's still right there, okay? And there you go. So our correct answer is 43 equals m. Many of us will want to change the order because we want the variable first, and we could write m equals 43. But at the end of the day, we got the same answer, and we're good to go, and we're ready to make this happen, okay? Let's take a look at another problem here, okay? Let's take a look at another problem, okay? Now, I notice that later on on this page, we have ourselves some um, distributive property. And we're going to work on distributive property for sure. But right now, we're not going to do distributive property yet. Right now, I'm just going to practice working with a variable on both sides of the equation, okay? I went ahead and selected number five because number five has some issues, okay? Let's take a look at number five. We have 7a minus 3 equals to 3 minus 2a. And maybe you could already tell that I'm already setting this problem up. We have a variable on both sides. We have to work with the side that has the least value of the variable. Okay? And that's why I'm already highlighting. I hope you see I highlighted which... The, the variables, we have seven A's on the left side. I hope you see them. They're, they're right there. And we have negative two A's on the right side, okay? And I hope you could tell that I also highlighted the negative symbol because that negative symbol is a big deal. So I hope you see on the left side, we have a seven. It's a positive seven. On the right side with the letter A, we have a negative two. Which of these numbers has less value? The negative two. So that's what we're going to cancel out. We're going to cancel out the side that has negative 2a. And how do you cancel out negative 2a? Well, we're going to write the opposite, positive 2a. We're going to add two a's to both sides of the equation, all right? We're going to add them, and then we're going to get it popping here, okay? So let's go in and see what happens. The two a's on the right side of the equation, since they're exactly the same, but opposites of each other, but inverses of each other, they cancel out. 7a minus, plus 2a, sorry, it's a plus. Make sure you, you write it correctly. It is a plus in this problem. 7a plus 2a makes a total of 9a's. 9a minus 3 equals to positive 3. And now that we've eliminated the variable from one side of the equation, we could go ahead and start using gemdas so we could work backwards. Notice, we're going to work backwards from the left side of the equation. That's why I'm writing the gemdas on the left side, okay? But it's all good. We're going to make it happen, okay? Notice, we're going to start from the bottom of the order of operations and work our way up, okay? Do we have any adds or subtracts? We sure do. We got a minus 3. So the opposite of minus 3 is plus 3. 
we're going to add 3 to both sides of the equation, okay? We're adding 3. So let's go ahead and set it up here. What happens to my negative 3 and my positive 3 on the left side? Cancels out, okay? That cancels out. On the right side, you may think it's going to cancel out, but the right side has a positive 3 plus another 3. These are the same sign. And remember, when you have the same sign, you find the sum. So same sign, sum. 3 and 3 make a total of 6. Equals. And we bring the rest of it straight down. We got ourselves 9A. Okay? We're almost done. But we got one last step on this problem. Okay? We got one last step. We need to cancel out the 9 with the letter A. And since it's 9 times A, the opposite is to divide both sides by 9. Same steps. What happens to the nines? They cancel out. Okay? So on the other side, we got 6 divided by 9. Okay? Now, honestly, we could do the work. But it's going to end up as a repeating fraction. Sorry, repeating decimal if we were to divide it. Okay? Sometimes it's okay to just simplify our fractions. We got 6 out of 9. Both of those, the numerator and the denominator, are multiples of 3. So we could divide both sides by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2, because 2 times 3 is 6. That's why. 9 divided by 3 is 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. And that's why. So our correct answer here is going to be A is equal to 2 thirds, okay? Okay. Now, if you want, you could have just used a calculator if it was asking for a decimal. You could have put 6 divided by 9, and we ended up with a decimal answer of 0 0.6 repeating, okay, repeating forever. That 7 at the end is just there because it's a rounding error, okay? But notice, I did 6 divided by 9. But if I do 2 divided by 3, it's exactly the same thing. So, again... I would prefer you to leave it as a decimal, sorry, as a fraction, because in algebra, fractions are completely okay. They're good. Fractions are very good. But if you want to change it to a decimal, it's 0 0.6 with a repeating bar, okay? So we get to practice a little bit. Um, I do want to maybe do one more. Let's do one more because I want to do a special case problem, okay? And I see a special case problem right here, okay? So we'll do this special case problem real quick, okay? This is a special case, and I see it, and, and I want to just, you know, do a little special case problem, all right? I hope you guys see this. We got ourselves negative 6y minus 3 equals to positive 3 minus 6y, okay? All right. So we got a variable on both sides of the equation. I'm going to write it out again at the top. Variable on both sides attack the one that has the least value, okay? So notice, I already highlighted the y's. I got negative 6 y's on the left, and I got negative 6 y's on the right. Some of you may already notice that they are exactly the same. We have negative 6 on the left, negative 6 on the right. We're going to actually cancel out the negative 6. And really, there's only one way to cancel out negative 6. The opposite of negative 6 is positive 6. So what we need to do is add 6 y's to both sides of the equation here, okay? So we're going to can't Notice we actually canceled them out not only on one side, but on both sides because they're exact opposites. The plus 6 y will cancel both of them out. So notice what we are left with. On the left side, we're left with negative 3. The equal sign's in the middle. On the right side, we're left with positive 3. And there should be something that goes up, like alarm should be going off in our head. Because is negative 3 the same as positive 3? Okay, because that's pretty much the question that's coming out right here. And, of course, the answer is a resounding no, okay? No. This is a false statement. It's false. 
And anytime in math you do a problem and you end up with some crazy stuff like this, this problem will have an answer of no solution, okay? No solution. If the statement at the end is false, the answer will be no solution. I will give you something else, though. What if we had three equals to three? What if? I'm going to even write it. What if? Okay, what if? And I'm not talking about the Disney stuff, okay? Because I like that what if, too, on the Disney Channel, too. But what if? What if three equals three? Well, in this case, that's a true sentence. That's a true statement. And if we had something like that, what if? Well, then we would put all real numbers, okay? So it, it matters here. If you ever do a problem and you end up with a false statement like we just did in this problem, there's no solution, no solution. But if you end up with a statement that's a true statement, just like this part at the bottom where I put all red, then it's all real numbers. I want to just throw that out because you may see stuff like that, okay? Well, I hope you guys have a great day. Hopefully, uh, you know, it's making some sense on this stuff. And, you know, we'll just keep it rocking. We'll keep it going. And, you know, we'll just keep having a good time, okay, guys? So I hope you guys have a good one. And uh, we'll see you in class, you know, for sure.